Okay, it's not just assless, it's entire crotchless. <laughs> oh yeah, you lost money this video. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I lost fans, I lost money, but I became more me. See, don't y'all right. want to be a drag king now? This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. And if you wanna watch this episode without any ads, completely uncensored, because there's gonna be some censorship in this episode, click the join button down below to become a member. Anyway. Hello, Landon Hello. Cider. Oh. Hello, King Molasses. So nice to meet you. Hello, Hello. Spiky Van, can I say the next word, the D word? Yeah. It's Spiky Van Dykey! <laughs> I got I got approval for that one. You have to ask permission now. It's like, can I say that? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I just have to sit and marvel over this before I told you that I was trying not to look at you yeah. because anytime I looked at you, I just wanted to compliment every single detail down to the well, rhinestone encrusted, what do you call this strap here? This it's a test, harness. This harness mm -hmm. with matching details. I mean, let's not even get to the hair the fact that that matches, but we got the brim of the hat. I love it. I'm a, I'm a rhinestone cowboy without the cows. There's so many masculine details, mm -hmm. but yet it's still feminine in, in many ways. Yeah, yeah. At least to the mainstream. Because that's, the... isn't that humankind? We have such gender roles that are forced on us and all that. And to me, drag is just f***ing with all of that. How long does it take you to get into this? So I do my makeup, I put my, you know, I paint my face, put my beard on and whatnot. Then I go to, to hair. Uh -huh. um, and my hair takes about, I don't know, 30 minutes. And that's not a wig, that's-, that's Oh, that's my that's, hair. That's, that's... Yeah, I get asked that all the time too. And I'm like, yep, that's my hair. This get up is absolutely incredible. Is get up a, a, a term that is acceptable? It, get up close to giddy up. Giddy I, I, up. See, I, I, I see I see what their subconscious mind is doing. My subconscious like <laughs> went to some other oh. cowboy places. Oh my God, imagine me in the airport with this hat on because it doesn't fit in my in my luggage or carry-on. So you have to wear it on your head. I have to wear it and I'd be walking down the escalator. They'd be like, yeah, I'm like, I am from Prince George's County, Maryland. Yes, I just, ha I like the hat. <laughs> I like the hat. What does being a drag king entail? It entails a lot of nerve, a bit of the kind of weirdo magic. I, I lovingly refer to myself um, as a weirdo. And I think just at base level, a desire to express yourself. When I posted that I was gonna be interviewing drag kings, a lot of people were like, drag kings? I, I thought it was just drag queens. Yep. Drag kings is not a thing that many people have heard of. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been around just as long, if not longer. Men have written history and they often write women out of it. And women take up a large history of drag king uh, culture and our history. And, you know, it's we've been forgotten about and left behind. Just because we have men celebrating the femininity in drag queens doesn't mean they understand to celebrate the femininity underneath the drag king. Even within, you know, the, the subculture within the subculture, mm -hmm. there's still some kind of patriarchal leaning that, that happens. For sure. Women weren't invited or welcomed into gay and queer spaces back in the day. We were kicked out. We were not we were not celebrated. So we had to go find our own thing. And oftentimes that's where a lot of things evolved, where you feel disgraced and you have to go find your own safe space. And women had to do that in our own queer spaces because Unfortunately, men didn't want women around a lot of times. So I have, in my lifetime, been kicked out of gay men's spaces. Mm. And gay bars, I just thought was a gay bar and I got kicked out because I was a woman. I didn't have a- Is King Molasses an alter ego? King Molasses or Molasses um, was just how I started. And uh, King uh, was my Instagram and people just were like, King, King Molasses, King Molasses. And I was just like, all right. King Molasses. You're like, I could get down with that. They, they named me King. I didn't name myself King. Someone else named me King. Right, yeah. And that kind of gives a bit of an alter ego vibe. Um, but in earnest, when I when I started, I, I didn't have like a backup story. I didn't have this sort of myth of myself. When I first saw Drag Kings perform, I thought to myself, oh, I could really do that. You know, yeah. like I could definitely, I, why do I think I can do that? That's, oh. Oh, and then all of that sort of the inner dialogue and the sort of the grumble stirred up. Mm -hmm. And eventually when I had the opportunity to perform at an open mic, open king type situation, uh, nobody knew but like my then partner. And I 
uh, performed as molasses. I don't hold on to king so seriously in the sense that, you know, I'm a king, I'm big authority, uh, I'm masculine, I'm, I'm strong. But my attachment to being a king, it really just comes from how I feel seen and validated in myself mm. when I say, my name is King Molasses and I'm a drag king. Like that feels good. You know, if I'm walking down the street, you would not necessarily know that I'm doing drag. The sort of the flair of it may tip some people off, but often when I am not performing and I'm on a way to the gig, um, I am, I am, sir, can you, oh, that, you, all right, cowboy, that kind of, that kind of deal. And a lot of people in drag spaces sometimes exalt my drag because I look like a man. My drag is not about looking like a man. My drag is about feeling liberated from other people's expectations and systems of oppression. Spikey is a character that I created when I was a kid. I used to draw comics. Mm. And when I was a kid, I always was like, oh, I just, I don't feel right. I should have been born a boy. I don't like this body. I can never, I can never figure out why I would look at a mirror and, and just not not be able to take it. I was like, hmm, something's off. I was bullied. I mean, I got like every single day was me dreading to go to school because I knew that I was gonna get bullied. I knew I was gonna get called, you know, names. And so I started to wear a hat on the bus and my headphones and I would just look down and not talk to anybody. Like I couldn't make eye contact with people. Um, I was very, you know, just still going home every day trying to figure out and when I was in high school was when I came up with the spiky character. As I got older, I just started to not really care. I was like, okay, I'm gonna rebel. So I started doing all this crazy stuff and like dyeing my hair and mm. wearing alternative clothes and just being punk AF. So I took all that and I put it into a character and that's how I made Spiky. Spiky was um, the therapy for my, you know, um, gender identity issues that I have. I mean, and I still have them, of course, but he really helped with that. Like I, when I'm wearing spiky, I feel invincible. All the things that I wanted to feel when I was being bullied in school, like I wanted to feel strong and powerful and untouchable. And I feel those when I'm spiky. Some people find drag and they do it for their own um, gender. Um, expression. Uh, some people do drag as an actor like me. They just find it because we came from theater and we got tired of playing the lady and waiting characters. Um, mm -hmm. We got tired of waiting for a man to come save me. So I became the man. Were there certain traits that you really wanted to show or emphasize? Sure. When I first started, it was very much crossing between male impersonation and drag kings where I thought I needed to look like a dude off stage and on stage and pass. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be sitting at a bar and have a gay guy hit on me thinking I was a real dude because I looked so good like a dude. But I got tired of people not understanding that it took two hours to do my makeup or three hours to do my makeup. They decided it was a guy that got up on drag and started performing. So I started to play with my makeup more so you can see the effort. And, and that just slowly evolved into the androgyny. It's a, a form of self-expression as any art would be? Right. I kind of see it as an audition every time I'm on stage to mm. to an audience that I may be the first introduction to. Do you remember the first time you got into drag? Yes. I was practicing my makeup for months before I was on stage for the first time, mm. like multiple times a week for months. And so I went on stage and I was addicted. Like it was, oh, this is my, this is where I belong. It's a perfect combination of my life's interests artistically as an adult, having all this little commentary and fun shit you can kind of poke at and yeah. it was just perfect. So it gave you a way to express yourself, but how did it make you feel? Alive. You Literally, felt alive. I felt alive, like orgasm. You know, where you're just, you, you can't, it, it ended and you're like, wait, I want more, but it's still kind of there, the lingering ass, like the, oh, the lingering after of the orgasm. Come down. Yeah, the come down. <laughs> so you're feeling the come down <laughs> afterward and you want more. Yeah, when the crowd is screaming and applauding and, and the whole audience is, is connected and celebrating your performance, as a performer, there's, there's nothing like that experience. It literally, my fingers tingle, you know, it's, it's electric. Were there any things in your childhood that you think 
kind of led you down the path of wanting to express yourself in, in, in this way? My mom was a badass. Yeah, she was a single parent um, and she had disabilities. She was legally blind, partially deaf, had some heart problems, but she didn't let that limit what opportunity she was gonna show me. So she worked under the table in order to afford the um, drawing classes, the karate classes, the swimming classes, the anything that I have interest in, she would work hard in order to allow me to take those things and explore. She in, inspired me in so many levels as a hard worker and encouraging me to explore all my interests and, and was never like, oh, you did it, you have to commit to it. It's like, well, if you're not having fun, then let's go do, find something else for you to have fun with. Whatever the case may be, it was always support and find your joy in something. And she never let anything tell her otherwise. So I couldn't take that example and let the world stop me from doing something. So I created my path and she was like the most huge inspiration that I could ever think of. With her help, she's encouraged you to be your truest self. Yeah, yeah. She used to make all my costumes. Oh, like, shit. And, and up until, I mean, she made my clothes too because we were poor, but all my costumes, she was legally blind, but she could see up close. So she was literally hunched over a sewing machine like this close so that she could make my costumes. I was so many things growing up and all thanks to her exploring things and helping me see that if you want to do it, do it. There's no excuses. Do you remember your first time in drag? Oh my God. What was that like? Um, <laughs> I used, this is gonna sound terrible and <laughs> any anybody who hears this who has boobs is gonna be like, oh my gosh, why? <laughs> um, I used box tape on my boobs to tape. Ooh. Yeah, it was- Like like all the way around? Or all the way around, all the way around because I didn't, you know, didn't know about this or- Like you were you know, about to ship yourself off in the mail? I was about to ship myself <laughs> off to the lesbians and cover myself in honey. Um, <laughs> And the hair, oh, this is the best part, Ooh. the facial hair. Oh man, I had a teddy bear. Yeah. And like, I cut the hair off of it and put it on my chin. I had my little, uh, my little goatee. You had teddy, teddy bear, bear hair? hair on my chin. <laughs> what was it like looking at yourself with this look? I walked different. Like everything was so different. Like I, when I put that tape on, even though it hurt like hell, I walked like I owned that room, like I, own that space. It was so weird how much everything changed as soon as I taped for the first time. My undergrad university, we we had a drag show. Like it was a big campus event every year. That was the first time I became aware and acquainted with drag on its own. Uh, growing up, I, I'm the child of two Nigerian immigrants. Um, so I was very much on the doctor, lawyer, engineer, no funny business, definitely not what I'm doing right now. I had no real concept of it mm -hmm. until I went to, I went to uh, college and I'd always had um, an affinity for masculine clothing. Uh, growing up, I I loved, like, I randomly really was into sweater vests. I don't, <laughs> like, it yeah. was really intense. But I think I just always had a, what's considered like the more masculine kind of look and vibe. I always leaned there. So the opportunity just to dress up, to go to a show where other people are dressing up mm -hmm. felt really affirming. Like you got to be more yourself? Yeah, almost. Mm. And I didn't really have the skills or the awareness to know that that was happening. All I knew was that it felt really good. Fast forward nearly um, like 10 years later, I routinely watch local drag like in my adult life in DC, um, seen mostly queens. And then I saw an all drag king show and I was even, the context of drag immediately changed for me. It just became this sort of grumble in like, in my heart and this voice kind of in the back of my head that was just like, you should do it. And I'm like, why? Did you resist? Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, I think the first, after the first King show that I saw, uh, I didn't perform for another year. I was just like this, I can't do this. Like people will see me, you know, I, I was a working journalist for like 10 years. Like that was really like, the bread and butter of my work. So I was always constantly worried about how I was being perceived mm -hmm. and always constantly transfixed about how people were perceiving each other in the world around, around us. A lot of people would assume that people who are dressing up as drag kings 
have a part of them that wants to be a man. Mm -hmm. For me, it's it's not a form of my personal gender expression when it comes to what I want to be. I identify as a cisgender lesbian, um, and so I have no like trans story, but I understand how my gender is still on a spectrum. So it doesn't mean that I feel more manly or I feel like a man. I'm just a little bit more masculine in this. And I think that's where all that spectrum comes in. It kind of correlates to my name. So Land Insider, it's a pun, Land Inside Her. Mm. I'm happy that it's kind of like a slow burn. Yeah. Um, especially because at the time it was, everything had to be a sexual innuendo in name. So I thought I was doing what the world was doing. But it evolved with my drag, it evolved. So now it's it's the land in inside me. It's the, it's the masculine within me that is just coming out in this androgynous way. It's just this little person inside me that's the masculine version, but still through all the glitter and all the rhinestones, you this know? It's a part of you that it's is expressing. But it's more of a character performance than too much gender expression. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life we're faced with tough decisions and the path forward isn't always clear. And while it may be helpful talking with your friends, a therapist's clinical awareness can offer grounded insight and guidance. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life. So you can move forward with confidence and excitement. As I'm sure many of you know, I've been a huge proponent of therapy since I started going about six years ago which has been hugely helpful for me in my own struggles with anxiety and depression. So if you've been thinking about starting therapy, BetterHelp might be perfect for you. It's 100% online and it's designed to work around your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you'll be matched with a licensed therapist. Plus you can switch therapists at any time for no additional cost. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Padilla. Now back to the world of drag kings. How can we support kings and the culture? You know, it's 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 so easy to support kings and the the type of drag that you don't see on a regular basis. It's going to your local shows, um, looking up hashtag drag king on social media. Those likes, those comments, those sharing, the saves, they all help tremendously. It seems so silly that we have to ask people to like and do these things, but it really is the business that they we are you, in now. They allow you to get to follow your dreams. They do. You may not be able to afford to throw money at me. You may not be able to tip me digitally or come to a show. You may not be able to tip me, but you can applaud. And the version you can applaud online is by likes and comments. And that's supporting. And that going to the shows, going to the drag show. And if there's not a drag king in the cast that night, asking like, oh, do we have any drag kings that we can uh, I can come and see next time? If you didn't know drag kings exist and you've been to a bunch of drag shows, maybe there's not many kings in your community, but it doesn't mean we don't exist. If you've been to a drag show and you saw one drag king once and he was boring, that doesn't mean all the drag kings are boring. I've been to drag queen shows and there were hella boring queens too. That's like me eating one single slice of pizza ever yeah. once in my life from a really shitty place. It's yeah. like, pizza sucks. Exactly, yeah. It's, <laughs> You find people at different levels of their career and their art. And when I first started, I wasn't great either, you know? So every, no one no one is phenomenal every single time. As much as drag has all these ways of expressing yourself and having people take positive things from it, there mm -hmm. are also people that take negative things from what drag represents. Mm -hmm. And there are bills being passed. Yes, there are multiple. And they're starting to be passed. And, attacking the drug community and the, and the transgender community and specifically is being disguised as drag. They're hiding their transphobic political charges as a drag band, protecting children from um, reading, us reading books to kids, saying that we're giving them some books at these children's story hours, which is completely false. It's so ridiculous. The language of these bills are so generic and unfounded on, on any fact and, and outdated narratives of what gender and, and sex is, that just being a trans person walking down the street, if someone, it's called clocking you, if someone clocks you as being trans, you can go to jail. If you do it twice, you can, it's a felony. These anti-drag laws, yeah. right? These, these, uh, these considerations of adult entertainment, um, fundamentally what they are are anti-human laws. 
Um, like I said, drag is an art form that helps us navigate and connect with the world around us. And when lawmakers, when legislative bodies who lack the curiosity to understand their constituents and the communities that they are in, um, and when they act in fear, you make laws that say that I can't do the work that I need to do to survive and feel liberated mm -hmm. in this world. That's really what they're saying. Um, it's simple in a really, I think, atrocious and violent way. And when I say anti-human laws, it's not just us drag performers that are, are, are being targeted. It's the people in our audiences, the people who that need to see us, that we're, we may be their only opportunity to understand what liberation for themselves can look like. When we tell people, you can't be yourself, it is against a law. We are making up this thing that says, don't do this thing, but continue to participate in a world where our systems will oppress you and make it hard for you just to be yourself. It's violence, it's anti-human. And I know drag performers and myself included definitely have a flair for the dramatic, but it's very, very dangerous, I think, to even just speak and use this type of language. Words mean things. They ultimately build our convictions and our ideologies and our beliefs. And while I have, and I often struggle to find the compassion for these lawmakers and these legislatures who clearly don't understand or seek to feel full or big or liberated in their lives by taking those tools away from myself and the people in my community. While I can understand the fear that comes with seeing liberation without the tools to be aware of what you are looking at, while I can get that, I'm gonna need y'all to stop. Now it's like, okay, you're gonna put the spotlight on me even more by doing this. I'm gonna take that and do something positive with it and make my art bigger, better, you know, louder than ever because now more people are gonna be watching, especially the ones who hate it. And, you know, I know we can't, like my thing is, I'm not gonna get angry at people. I, I more than anything just want people to try to be understanding. And I think that, you know, years of like counseling has taught me, I just want people to be understanding. And you don't have to be okay with what I do, but understand that if it's not for you, that's okay. It's not personal. There are so many people out there, like especially kids out there who cannot be themselves, who are resorting to suicide because they cannot be themselves. You need to let them know it is okay. They have to have some kind of outlet that gives them peace, inner peace and safety. Like the safety part is so, so, so important. Let's say for example, that's, there's someone watching right now who takes personal offense to just <laughs> you looking like this. I am offensive. <laughs> is there anything, like what would you say to someone right now who's watching and is like, no, that is offensive to me and I take that very personally. I had a friend who was a pastor and he used to come into my Starbucks. He would come in and talk to me, you know, and I would tell him about my shows and what I did and traveling. And we were talking about that. And he was like, hey, you know, I, I had to do something that was really uncomfortable for me, but I did it. And I think that you will be proud of it. And I'm like, okay. He goes, well, the, you know, the main pastor guy came up to him and said, hey, there's a girl that is in the youth, youth group and she's gay. And I need you to tell her that it's not okay. And that if she continues to, you know, be gay and not get saved, that she's no longer allowed at our church. And he goes, well, I can't do that. And he said, well, why? And he told him, well, what if I told you that when you wake up tomorrow, you have to be with a man? and you would have to divorce your wife and that it was a sin and you would go to hell if you didn't wake up tomorrow and leave your wife to be with a man. Could you do it? He goes, no. He goes, that's what it's like for her. And they fired him, but he did the right thing. And they, that was it. That was like, 
I was mind blown. I was like, so I got through to this guy. Like he was like super reserved and him doing that was just, wow. Like that's the best way to explain it. You know, you can't wake up one day and go, I'm this way. You just are who you are. And that's, that's it. You either embrace it or you don't. It's weird because in my head, it sounds so silly that, that lawmakers would try to understand and inform, but it's, it's, it's like, no, let's shut the door. Let's walk. Let's, let's act like this doesn't exist. Let's put anyone that's behind this door into this, this, you know, ever evolving bubble of what's not acceptable and what we don't want to even act like is part of culture. We want to, we want to shove it out of culture, yeah. right? We, we, which then births the underground communities where drag was born in the first place. Yeah. We're going to survive regardless but to your point yes it's constantly it's saying i don't want to get to know you i don't this i don't this and this looks like fear to me and i think this looks like fear to a lot of people and when i say fear i am not seeking to lessen the consequences of what that fear is but I understand it to be fear because I can relate to that. I put on a beard to cover most of my face because I did not want people to recognize me. I get what it is to be afraid. I will lose people in my life who will see this. I get it. That does not give me the opportunity to harm and hurt the people in my life and in my community because I am afraid. Shall we lighten the mood a little bit? Yeah, a little Shall, hot. We? Shall we get there? Ooh. Yeah, cool it down a little bit. Well, things might get a little hotter in a moment because I heard that you have a, a special surprise clothing item for me. Oh yes, bring the chaps. Yeah, of course we can probably put these on over your pants, but yeah. yeah. Uh, these... Oh, oh, it's more, okay. It's not just assless, it's entire crotchless. <laughs> Those are those oh, are crotchless chaps. But you chaps. got it. You got it, right? Baby's first pair. We are so proud. <laughs> okay. Let's see. We go. Oh, look. Come on now. Is that what we do? Yeah. But we'll zip it down. You can zip it up. See how you feel. Let's oh. see how far we can get. Oh wait, it up. Is, it, is this supposed to be all the way up here? No, you got some yams. That's yeah, why. these are yammy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yammies let's go, are getting yammy. So let's go ahead and zip this up. We're going to do a little okay. avant-garde. Oh yeah? Kind of, look, we're gonna zip you all the way up so we can get okay, it as high as possible. Okay. There we go. That's what I'm gonna be doing later as well. Ooh, look at this. Okay. And That's this is, right. So this is the correct way. Mm-hmm, about to get you on only too. Thank you. After this. Thank you, so we got just YouTube memberships right now, but you think I'll need to upgrade to to undisclosed website for fans.com? I think, <laughs> let's see, oh, you got a butt. Dude, oh. I, I told you these yammies getting hammy. They are. <laughs> Turn around. Yeah. Let the people see. Look at these peaches. Did y'all even know that this was what he was working with? <laughs> Yo, what's your drag king name? I know you were for Cameron Michaels. Uh, you were Kelly, huh? I was Kelly Michaels. Kelly Michaels. Who you gonna be for me? T Pain. Uh... <laughs> I can't get got... the rights to that drag name. No, that that's what been taken. Mm -hmm. That's been taken. Oh yeah, you lost money this video. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, but I became more me. See, don't y'all want to be a drag king now? Was it that bad? Can you sit? Ooh. I can sit just You fine. look like the love interest for Lady Gaga in her next Western. That's All what right. this is given. Um, if How do you feel about at, this? If the casting director of Lady yeah, Gaga is here. Move on over, Bradley. <laughs> Woo! Fellas, this is ladies. Looking. Anyone in between? The vapors. <laughs> I'm getting them, child. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming to my oh, show. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Uh, you're welcome. Molasses, it's such a pleasure to meet you. I've been liberated. <laughs> and you gotta always remember, you gotta I. F oh, so teach me the so art I of the I. The art of the I. Yeah. Is about maintaining your gaze mm -hmm. and not breaking like around too much. So if you're moving, you're kind of just maintaining it and you stay and then you just look. Is there a thought that accompanies that action? Is it that I want to fuck whatever I'm looking at? It's more like I want you to want me to fuck you. Oh, so yeah. you don't want to fuck 
Damn, no, you I want them to want. I don't want to want you to think I want you to you. Got yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's not crazy Zoolander, but it's kind of in that realm of. Okay. A, a subtle blue steel? The parody. Yeah, but not the parody version of blue steel. Okay. Like a real, like. Okay, so it's a little thing with the mouth, though. Oh, so it's like how I take my selfies. Yeah, and then you'll just evolve into camera work. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think it's why I, I lose a lot of uh, guys who follow me when I post a selfie. Um, I think that's why. Yeah, because they're they, they realize that they want you to f them. That's the people that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.